Hey guys, Hirsh here back in the video. So in this video, as the title says, I'm going to show you how you can use your ESP32 board with the matrix display over here. As you can see, it is right now printing the name of my channel. So this is a very easy project to make. There is almost no coding involved as you will be using the example from the library, which is very kindly provided by the developers of the library itself. And basically this matrix display is quite nice and big rather than your standard LCD display. So as always, without wasting time, let's get started so first up you will need your esp32 and as you can see i have done some modification to it i have actually attached a separate antenna to it which goes at the sma connector over here it is not right now connected doesn't really matter the range is still good without it so if you want to know how to connect it i will just give the link of it in the description box below you can check it from there and apart from that is just a simple esp32 nothing too special then we have this matrix display over here it is a md729 i think something called matrix display let me just quickly check it so yeah it is the max 7219 ic in there that's the name of the display as well and you can see like how the sections can come out in this singular pieces so this consists of four pieces you can obviously if you like you can add more to the line and create like a gigantic strip display so this comes in like pieces of four and then we have single pieces also so you can mix and match and try different combinations as you like so now let's connect it to the esp32 as you can see, we have total of five pins over here. Two of them are for power and three of them are for the data. So first let's connect our VCC. So we can connect the jumper wire from here and connect it to the V in pin on the ESP32, which will provide five volts directly from the USB port. This actually like has some glitching going on when it works on 3.3 volts. So just make sure to use a reliable five volt supply. Then we can take the ground from the display and connect it to the ground on the 32 which is right next to the V in pin just like so as you can see and then we need to connect the data input pin which is labeled as D in over here as you can see it is quite clearly visible so we'll connect the jumper wire here and it will go to the GPR pin number 23 on the ESP32 it is already predefined in the library so I'm just following the steps from there as well I think like if you change some of the pins the properties of the pin changes so it won't work as expected so I'm just sticking to the library example then we can take the CS pin and connect it to the GPR pin number 5 which is I think right over here somewhere right over here as you can see just like so and then finally we can take the clock pin which is labeled as CLK and connect it to pin number 18 which is I believe right next to the D5 oh yeah it is right over here just like so so only a 5 wire connection pretty simple to do so now let's head over to a computer and program it so on your Arduino IDE first you need to make sure that you can actually upload your code to the ESP32 board and to do that first you need to go to the file section and then click on preferences here in the additional boards manager URL you have to paste a link I will give it in the description box below this will basically allow the IDE to grab more links from the web and if you have any other link pasted here just put a comma and then put the next one as well that won't be an issue once you have done that you can just go ahead and click on ok then go to the boards manager section and type in your ESP32 so you can see we get two options one by the Arduino and one by the Espressive system so install the one by the Espressive system and once it has installed you can just go ahead and restart your Arduino. now we need to also add the library so just go to the library section and type in MD underscore max you will get this one library over here which is the MD underscore max 72 XX XX being any number of the matrix display for my particular case it is one nine now once it has installed just go to the file section again then click on examples and then scroll down and find your max library which is this one over here and here very conveniently we get all these options over here and from here we have this option over here which is the MD max message underscore ESP32 so just click on it. it will open up a separate IDE window with the example sketch already in it so here is the example sketch and you need to make some modifications to it to make sure that it works for your particular case starting off with the line number 45 we have to select our hardware type it is by default set to parola hw as you can see but for my matrix what i found out is that it works for the fc16 so just uh, remove the parola and replace it with fc16 just like so and then we need to set the maximum number of devices for mine as you know it is four but obviously in your case it may be different maybe more maybe less so you need to change accordingly here you can see the pins over here are quite neatly defined so we don't need to do anything over here and the final change that we need to do over here is the Wi-Fi name and password so all you need to do over here is just type in your Wi-Fi name and then your Wi-Fi password whatever it may be and that's about it for the modifications 
now we can go ahead and select our board from this drop down menu just go to the select other boards and port and here you have to search for ESP32 just type in dev you will directly get it the ESP32 dev module select that and then select our com port I am only getting one over here so it's quite easy to figure out that it is the only one in which my ESP32 is connected and once both of them are selected you can just go ahead and click on ok now as you can see they are written in bold letters now we can just go ahead and simply click this button and upload this code to the board and as always it will first compile the sketch and once the compiling has done it will start uploading it to the board so after programming it should like uh, immediately work after and I have just disconnected it to show you like how it would feel like if you were to make a fresh install on it so let me just quickly connect it up with the power supply and shortly after it is connected to the Wi-Fi it, you can see like we get the IP address over here so it is 192.168.1.9 so this IP address we need to type in in our phone browser make sure that your phone is also connected to the same Wi-Fi network as is your ESP32 so I have already typed in let me just refresh it so you can see we now get this message box over here so you can type whatever gibberish you like and then click on the send text button and after the cycle goes it should read out whatever your text was so as you can see it is right now reading YouTube so that's quite nice and basically from here you, if you want to change the text you can obviously do so by just deleting all that and you see that deleting all that just uh, keeps it in place so if I just send an empty text the display will turn off just like so that is a very nice feature as well so let me just type in some other gibberish now and send it to the ESP32 and as you can see it now reads again so that is guys that's how you can use the ESP32 and the max 7219 matrix display to display your text in a scrolling pattern so thanks for watching the video guys hopefully you enjoyed it and if you have any doubts or comments regarding this video you can comment down below i will provide a circuit diagram for this in the description box below as well although it is a quite simple one so as always i will see you all in the next one